Just to be clear, nobody wants to be in this class. You're taking it to complete your degree requirements. I'm teaching it to fulfill a job requirement. With that in mind, consider this. How is it that in a system created by humans for humans, Students who don't want to learn something are paying to take a class from someone who doesn't want to teach them. <laughs> This comic from Saturday Morning Breakfast Serial by Zach Wienersmith asks a really good question. And if there's one thing I've realized is the key to success in my career, both as a scientist and an educator, it's asking questions. For example, when I was first asked to give this talk, my response was, What's a TED Talk? <laughs> Followed by asking my friends, how do you feel about this comic as my opener? To which the response was, that is too many words and way too depressing. <laughs> my point is, you need to learn to ask the right questions. But it's up to you to decide what to do with the feedback. So I saw this comic many, many months ago, and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. I started thinking about my own undergraduate experience, the number of classes I skipped or slept through or just hated. But I knew for some reason I had to keep going. When I saw this comic, I thought, I want to fix this. I want to create a class that I want to teach and that students want to take, and I am going to fix education in one fell swoop. The only problem was I had no idea how to design a course, or what to teach, or how to teach. It turns out that Johns Hopkins has something called the Center for Educational Resources. And once I decided that I'm going to be a teacher, I googled Hopkins and teaching, and that popped up, along with a program called the Preparing Future Faculty Teaching Academy which focuses on helping graduate students and postdocs to become better teachers. This was an amazing experience, and it allowed me the opportunity to talk with a number of truly wonderful professors and pick their brains for all sorts of activities and teaching expertise. Probably the biggest takeaway from this program, though, was the amount of learning diversity we have on this campus. That is, every student learns so differently that there is no such thing as a perfect teacher for everyone. This started to confuse my romanticized notion of fixing education. So I thought to ask another question. Before I taught my intercession course this past January, a professor from the Department of Materials Science was kind enough to let me take over his class for a few lectures. If you were in that class, I'm really sorry. <laughs> that was my first time actually teaching a class. Um, I asked the students a number of questions on a survey. I asked them how well they already understood binary phase diagrams, which are a common type of graph seen in materials engineering. I asked them what their preferred learning styles were. And I asked them how they felt about me as a teacher. Words can hurt. <laughs> But sifting through all of this information, I, I came up with what I felt were a few nuggets of wisdom. So number one, students will be shockingly honest when asked for their anonymous opinions. <laughs> number two, even the students who say that they learn best by reading still don't do the reading or much of anything else outside of class unless it's being specifically graded. And number three, students hate being cold called a lot. I promise, no more. Um, so I took all of this feedback and I swore to never again cold call a student, at least for now. At first, I, I felt that these students were so ungrateful and disrespectful for showing up late to class or for skipping it entirely and wasting their parents' money. And at the same time, I felt that I am the worst teacher ever because it's my job to make this interesting for them. But then after a few deep breaths, I realized that there's some truths to both sides of that. Students should show up on time to class. That's basic respect. But although teachers have a duty to engage their students on a vaguely interesting level, unless a course is quite literally teaching the science of chocolate, 
there is no need to candy coat a curriculum to appeal to adult students who have no interest in the subject. Which brings me to my next question. Why are you sitting here? This TEDx event is advertised as fun and exciting, just like the course I ended up designing, Chocolate, an Introduction to Materials Science. For you, just like for my students, this was a pretty easy question to answer in the moment. But throughout my undergraduate career, I would find myself completely unable to answer this question, except for a cliched, I'm supposed to be here. Why? Why am I supposed to be here? Is this really necessary for the future career that I'm imagining for myself? I didn't ask this question nearly enough when I was 18, 19, 20. When I was 21, I was voted to be class speaker at my college graduation, and I proudly announced to a few thousand people that I had had a change of heart, and I now understood that my calling was medicine and not theoretical physics. Just, just to be clear, I'm not currently studying medicine or theoretical physics. <laughs> um, I'm somewhere between educational research and food science and engineering. I was tempted to feel guilty six months later when I realized that I had lied to all of these people. Until I realized it was none of their business. They certainly didn't know any more than I did what I was supposed to be doing with my life. The only expectations I had to meet were my own. I'll tell you a secret I wish I had known when I was 18 or 19. Just because you wrote on your admissions essay that you wanted to cure cancer or write the next Harry Potter doesn't mean you're not allowed to reevaluate a year later. So maybe you do feel a little lost. Maybe you're not as happy in your major as you were expecting to be, or maybe you're really anxious about your future career. I continue to feel all of these things on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> but what has gotten me through the confusion and anxiety is learning to ask for help. There was a semester during my senior year of undergrad where I cried every single day after classes. And besides my family, no one had any idea. Because that's not the face you're supposed to show the world. You smile and you nod and you brag about how easy the homework is or you blame the teacher when something goes wrong. And you name drop philosophers and Nobel laureates all in the hope of getting through one more week with nobody realizing what a complete fraud you are who has no business being at a top tier institution. Or maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about, which is awesome, and we should go get coffee after this. <laughs> <sighs> but statistically speaking, some of you, possibly most of you, have felt this way at some point or another. And as strange as it is to admit that no one knew how much I cried while I carried on as happy and bubbly as ever, the stranger thing is that I didn't know why I was crying, or how to stop it. So when I finally did admit to myself that this problem wasn't going to go away on its own, I started talking to a therapist and started trying to figure out what exactly I was thinking and why it was having this impact on me. I started asking, why am I taking these classes? Why am, am I in this major? Why am I on this career path? And all I could come up with is, I'm supposed to. Somewhere along the line, I had become convinced that prestige would lead to happiness, would lead to my ultimate true calling. And it was painful to realize that I didn't actually like anything about what I was studying. I won't say that I regret the time I spent like this, because who knows where I would have ended up otherwise. But I do know that I could have saved myself a lot of pain if I had been willing to engage in some honest, unbiased, non-judgmental introspection. Learning to be introspective of myself in this manner made me wonder what would happen if I asked the same of my students, at least a little bit. How do you learn? So I asked them. 
And when I was able to match my teaching style to what they told me that their learning preferences were, something pretty amazing happened. They learned. I have statistical evidence that shows that non-engineering students can learn binary phase diagrams just as well in the context of chocolatey desserts like I taught in my class, if not better, than in a traditional materials engineering lecture. Even more interestingly, when I asked these same students to reevaluate their learning preferences a mere three weeks later, after they had taken this class, over half of them had actually changed their preference entirely just three weeks later. When you're reminded to constantly reevaluate yourself and your learning and your goals, you might be really surprised to find out how much they change without you even noticing. I love the title of this event. It's such a great reminder that you don't come with an instruction manual. The only advice I can give that does apply to every one of you is to start asking questions constantly. Whether it's questions to yourself or your friends or Google or Siri, just ask. The only question I don't recommend is, what am I supposed to do? Maybe instead, we can start asking, what would make me feel fulfilled, confident, responsible, respectable, happy, joyful, and once you come up with your idea, even if it's something as crazy as, hey, I bet I could get my department to pay for 30 pounds of chocolate if I tell them it's for science. <laughs> or, I'm really sad where I am and I don't know why. Keep asking. Whether it's your friends or your family or teacher or mentor or therapist, religious educator or the local cheesemaker, just ask. The worst they can say is no. You'll never end up where you're supposed to be because that place doesn't exist. I was no more meant to go into physics or medicine than I am meant to be here. But I'm a lot happier now, so I think I'll keep doing it. <sighs> Your fate isn't written in an instruction manual from IKEA but it is written in the choices that you make every day. And if you can learn to ask enough of the right questions, even though you'll never end up where you're supposed to be, you will end up satisfied, happy, exactly where you are. Thank you. <laughs>